got some visitors this morning. Amen. Uh, we're glad to have y'all. Glad to see you here. Hope to see you back again. Yeah. yeah. And I hope uh, Charlie Shepard, once you come here, one time, you're family. Amen. 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 Sure do. I noticed there's one. Uh, we got uh, Brenda and Jerry. They're back. Yeah.
guide them and help them along their way. Lord, this, uh, we ask that you continue to guide and take care of our military personnel, our emergency services workers, our medical professionals. And they are still fighting the COVID deal and, and they need your guidance and your blessings. Again, Lord, I ask that you continue to bless this church. Guide the service today. Give Brother James the words that you would have us hear. Guide his message as you always do. He's always an inspirational message. Lord, I ask that you forgive us for our sins and many, many shortcomings that we have. Be with us through the rest of this day and the rest of this service. All these things I ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We have been on special these last two weeks. But the good thing is that I've got to give two amazing miracles. Travis has been cut from here to here to take muscle and skin to do this graft, this huge graft. He has had no pain. And then this huge massive surgery they did up here, no pain. Amen. He can take over the counter Tylenol, and that's only for the headaches from the 11 hours of being under the surgery. And the main miracle that I'm just so thankful to God over, they told us on the MRI that the derma, which goes around the brain and holds the, the liquid in, they said that it has cancer in it. And then we'll have to cut part of it out, which exposes the brain. When they got in there and they cut it out, there was no cancer. There is a nerve that got as close to the carotid as they safely could, but there are just minuscule pieces of cancer left that they said that seven weeks of radiation will take care of it, so I'm going to sell mine. Mm -hmm. Other than that, Travis is doing good, he's at home, he's watching right now. I love you. And we can't thank you all for all your prayers.
Thomas Jefferson, March 4th, 1801. <laughs> Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable ministry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitude brought hindered out of many kindreds and tongues. Endow with thy spirit of wisdom these whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All of which we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 His name is Abraham. We're going to be preaching about Abraham this morning. And we're going to talk about looking back. It's amazing how God can tie. Because I had no idea she was even going to sing. and any idea she was even going to be. Uh, but to sing this morning. But how he ties the music program into the message. Only God can do that. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bible this morning, I'm going to turn to the book of Genesis, please. The book of Genesis. We're going to go all the way back to chapter 13 of the book of Genesis. And I do want to express while you're turning there uh, what a privilege it is to have all of our visitors in our service today. Amen. And we're so thankful that you're here. And we pray that you'll receive a blessing from being in God's house. Because you've already blessed us. I just see you. Amen. 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 We're so thankful that you're here and that you'll receive a blessing out of being here. And also, I want to reiterate what Brother Ray said. Uh, please stay and have lunch with us. Give us a time of fellowship with you and, and enjoy a good meal. And uh, so if you can do that, uh, I know a lot of times visitors come and they don't feel comfortable because they're not a member of the church or they didn't bring anything. Uh, if you showed up this morning, you're invited to come be a part of the meal. And we hope that you will stay and enjoy the meal with us. Okay, Genesis chapter 13. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 1. Uh, there's several verses of scripture, but in order for you to get the whole picture of where we're coming from this morning, uh, I, I feel like I need to read uh, the entire uh, portion of this so that you'll get an idea of where our message is coming from. Starts in verse thir uh, chapter 13, verse 1. said that Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that they had, and Lot was with him uh, unto the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journey uh, from the south, even to Bethel, and the place uh, where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hecai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, and they might dwell together in the substance uh, was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram uh, cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Pegasite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen 
and thy burden. And for we be brethren, and not the whole land before thee. Bread thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou would depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold all the plain of Jordan. And there was, it, it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zion. And Lot chose him all the plains of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and there separated themselves one from the other. And Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the city of the plain. And he pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot had separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from this place, where thou, and northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. He said, All the land which thou seest, it will, <laughs> to thee will I give it, and to all thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall he see it, his seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, and I will give it unto thee. And Abram removed his tent and came and dwelled in the plain of Mea, and, and which is he or he borrowed, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Let's go to the prayer. Our Father, we do thank you so much for your blessing this morning. God, I thank you for this good attendance that we have today. Lord, we have over 80 in our service this morning. And God, we know that that's your hand at work. And so, God, we just thank you for them this morning. Thank you again for our visitors. But, Lord, we thank you for our home folks that's come home this morning. God, we just thank you so much for touching them and lifting them up. And God, just healing their body. Lord, we thank you for Travis this morning. And, God, we just thank you that you watched over him. And, God, that you protected him and guided the doctor's hands and they treated him. And, God, we just pray that we'll see him back in the service soon. Lord, serving you and doing the thing, God, that you have him to do. Lord, I ask you this morning that you just bless your message today. And God bless your messenger. So, Lord, I, I realize within myself this morning, God, I will surely fail thee if it's left up to me. But, Lord, I ask you to take me, mold me, make me a vessel fit for your use today. And, God, may I speak your word with power, simplicity, God, that they need to be spoken with. Lord, I pray that you will take this service now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All of you are very familiar, I'm sure, with the story of Lot and Abraham. Abram was later changed to Abraham. And so Lot, Lot and Abraham went down to Egypt. And I'm just going to kind of rephrase a little bit of what happened there. So uh, we read it from the Word of God, but I'll give you a redneck version, okay? They went down and got filthy rich. Amen? I mean, they collected all the things that a man could possibly dream on. They had silver and gold and cattle and all this stuff that they needed materially wise to be uh, rich in the land. And they went and they left Egypt and they came to a place and there they dwelled, the Bible says, together. But it became a problem between all of the stuff that Lot had and all the stuff that Abraham had that there was not enough room where they were at. Uh, if you're a rancher or a farmer, it would be like putting 3,000 head of cattle on a two-acre land trying to get <laughs> enough room, uh, enough grass to feed them. But there was, there was a conflict, but it was not between Lot and Abraham. Now, I want you to understand that. They did not disagree. They did not quarrel 
one with the other. They were, they were, Abraham was Lot's uncle. He was of his same uh, family. He was his brother, the Bible calls it. But he was his uncle, and he loved his uncle. He lived with his uncle uh, most of his life. And he saw how his uncle would honor God and bless God and how God would honor Abraham and bless him. Because if it had not been for Abraham, Lot wouldn't have had anything. Amen. God's blessing was, was poured out upon Lot because he was in the right company, in the right place, at the right time, doing what God would have him to do. Amen. Isn't it amazing when we get in the presence of God and we're new, we're in the fellowship of God, and God is blessing. It don't matter where you are, you will affect people around you. Amen. Same way if you wake up one morning and you walk out and you're in a real bad mood, you know, and you start running into people, you're going to affect them people with that bad mood also. You ever had somebody just kind of snap at you a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I made a mistake going into an all-night restaurant. The waitress had worked all night long. That was not a good experience. <laughs> she was not a nice person. And it still cost me 16 bucks, but she still wasn't a nice person. <laughs> and I didn't even eat my breakfast. I walked out. But people's attitude. They make a difference. But Adam, but Abraham and Lot attitude against the twins between them two was nothing wrong. The problem was all the possessions that they had. You know, it's okay to have possessions. But when those possessions start getting in your way, and they start taking away from the things of God, then those possessions quit being material possessions and become your God. Amen. You know, the Bible says anything you put between you and God becomes your God. Amen. And God doesn't. I mean, God wants people to prosper. Yes. Yes. I don't think God wants anybody to starve to death no. or anybody to be a pauper. God wants to bless you. But the only way he can bless you is for you to bless him in the beginning. The right. Bible says this, put it this way in concerning that. He said, try me. See if I not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. Amen. But the regard we get at that, he said, you got to try me. So it's us acting first and then God acting next. We always got that backwards, right? Yep. Christians are, are real bad about getting that backwards. We want God to act and then we will react. Amen. And it's not the way it works. So Lot and they parted. One reason why I, I take up this, this, this character list this morning is because I believe that this represents man, and perhaps there is no other Bible character that represents so many men of the present day than the man Lot. Amen. You know, you only have a, I mean, you have an Abraham, you have a Daniel, you have a Joshua, but you only have one of those. But you've got thousands of Lot. Church houses this morning across America will be filled with a lot of lot. I would be tempted to say this morning, and I hope I don't hurt your feelings if I do. I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to say it anyhow. I'm afraid we probably have some lot in this service today. The problem we have is not the name lot. It's the reasoning behind it. Amen. Let's notice, number one, if we were to number this, he started out very well. He got very rich in the beginning. And then the trouble began. We start out 
trying to really do what God wants us to do. But the devil is real good about putting obstacles in our way. Amen. He's real good about trying our patience. He's real good about trying to manipulate us and take our mind off of God and put our mind on something else. Amen. Have you ever, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because I don't want to embarrass me or you either, but <laughs> have you ever been in a service and your mind was occupied on something other than the message? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The devil will work that way sometimes. And you'll walk away and say, well, that's God, I don't like that preacher. He can't preach a lick. I didn't like that music program. They, wasn't a, and they didn't do enough of this, or they didn't do this too much of that. The steel guitar was too loud. The singing was too low. I mean, they'll, they'll admit hit the service. Well, if you're miserable at this point, can I give you some advice? If you came looking for a perfect church, you're in the wrong church. <laughs> and I love our church. We've got some of the greatest people in the world. Yeah. But it's made up of people. Amen. Amen. Always remember that. Every one of us is a sinner saved by grace. Had not been for the blood of Jesus Christ, you wouldn't be any sort of Even though Lot, the Bible says he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Now he didn't go into Sodom. Twenty years he stayed outside of the city of Sodom. He pitched his tent there. He was more interested in the land around him. He was more interested in gaining more wealth. The reason he chose the land was because of its beauty and because of the abundance of water and material things that it had to offer. Now, he didn't talk to Abraham about his decision. And if you'll notice, he didn't even talk to God about his decision. He made his decision on what he saw. People get out of the will of God because sometimes by what they see. Can I get personal with you this morning? A lot of marriages get broken up because somebody on one side or the other sees something that they like. They don't know anything about the person except they like the beauty. Or they like the person. They don't understand. They've never lived with that person. And they compare them to the situation they're in, not realizing that they're probably leaving the greatest thing that they ever had in their life, hoping for something better on the other yeah, side. Right. You ever seen a cow? <coughs> inside of a fence, just grass everywhere, and you drive down the road, and they got their head stuck through the bar, the bar bar, in the bar, they're trying to eat that grass. Yep. Yep. It just looks so much better. I just gotta have some of it. <laughs> and that's where we get in the problem. <laughs> he saw that pretty land. He knew to pray about it. Abraham had taught him they built altars everywhere they went. And they prayed to God. They thanked God for the substance that they had. They thanked God that God brought them out of Egypt with all the wealth that they had. But he never stopped to think, ask God, which direction should I go? Now he had a choice. Abraham gave him a choice. He said, you go to the right, I'll go to the left. But if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. He said, your choice is yours. <clears throat> All he could see was what his eyes showed him. A 
love the end of that story. God looked at Abraham, who had stayed on that plane. Oh, it wasn't as pretty, wasn't as prosperous as where Lot went. But there he built an altar to God. And he prayed to God. And God said, Abraham, I want you to look around. He may be over there in that well water plain. But he said, as far as you can see to the west, far as you can see to the east, far as you can see to the north, far as you can see to the south, it's yours. Amen. Wherever you go, it's yours. <clears throat> he became one of the greatest men that you could ever pattern a person by in the Word of God. But it's all because everything that he did, he consulted God first and allowed God to drive, direct, and lead and guide him in what he's doing. See, when you turn it over to God, you don't have to worry about it. You know why people are stressed out? Why they're going through problems in their lives? Why they have uh, all kinds of, of medical problems going on, or mental problems, not medical, I'm sorry, mental problems going on? It's because they're too much trying to focus on doing things themselves <laughs> instead of letting God lead and guide. Amen. It's like you ever had somebody, and one of the guys this morning talked about that. Somebody try to do something and they couldn't get it done, so they call you to come and straighten out the mess that you made. <laughs> See, if they just left it alone and called you to start with, it would have been a lot easier project. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a lot easier. But because they tried it first <coughs> and got things a lot worse than what it was to start with, now they expect you to come along and clean things up. God is not a cleaner. No, you didn't hear that. God is not a queen. Amen. Amen. It's not his job to clean up your mess. Right. It's your job to allow God to help you clean up your own mess. Amen. What did he say? I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Amen. You don't think you have the ability? You don't think you have the talent? You don't think you've got what it takes? God said, just try it. I'll show you yeah. that I can lead you in the right direction. Lot pitched his tent toward Sodom. And then the temptation moved him all the way in to the city. Now Lot's living in the city. He's wealthy. The people of the city welcomed him with open arms because of his wealth, because of all the things that he could contribute to them. Oh, they might have been elected the mayor. He might have been the governor of Sodom and Gomorrah. He might have been elected as a judge. Because his popularity was great. But then there arose a problem. He got away from God and he lost his reputation and he lost his conviction that he had that God had given him. Pretty soon, he was like the rest of the Solomon. You couldn't tell him from anybody else in the city. Angel came to visit him. And they told him, Lot, you need to get out of here. 
God's fixing to destroy this city. And you need to get out of here. So here's Lot. He's trying his best. He went to his son-in-law's house. You want the rest of the story? Move to chapter 19 of the book of Genesis. And it'll give you the rest of the story. I didn't have time to read all of it this morning. But you'll get the rest of the story, Paul Harvey said, if you go to chapter 19. <laughs> but he went trying. He knocked on doors, trying to plead. Because God told him, if you can just find 10, 10 righteous people, I will spare the city. So Lot was in a hurry. He was about to lose everything he had. He was about to lose his family. So he went knocking doors. And they laughed at him. They made fun of him. Oh, you claim to be a Christian, but here you are. We saw the way you lived your life when you moved into the city. He went to his son-in-law. You see, his daughters had intermarried with the Sodomites. Ooh, what a bad relationship when our children intermarry with the world. His son-in-law laughed at his face and said, Who are you to come tell me that God spoke to you? He went from place to place to place. Finally, God told him, Lot, you gotta get out of here. It's time to head to the hills. Now he's gonna leave all of that possession. <coughs> you see, when you start dealing in the sin, you're going to lose everything that you have. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll cost you more than you want to spend. And it'll keep you there longer than you want to stay. He went, he had two daughters that were still at home. His two daughters, him and his wife fled the city to the place that God had prepared for them to go for protection. He told them when they left, don't look back. See, here's the problem. We get out of a bad situation. We get off of drugs or we get off of whatever addiction you might have. And we're doing pretty good for a little while. And then we start looking back. Yep. And we start going back to those places that we need to go. Norm and I work with people all the time and a lot of these guys here that have been in law enforcement and we have several of them in our service. And you've seen it where people were addicted to drugs or, or some kind of substance, they go to rehab and they get treatment. You and I pay for it, but they get treatment. And I'm glad to pay for it if it'll straighten them up. I don't have problems. And they come out and boy, they'll be going real good for a little while. Then they start hanging out with the same crowd that they used to hang out with. You see, do you realize you're guilty this morning by the law says by association? So if you're just hanging out with somebody that's a wrong crowd, the whole world is going to treat you as if you're one of that person. No matter who you are. No matter how. Many times. And pretty soon, that person will get right back in the place they were because they 
went back to that same crowd that they left. You see, that's when God said we need to make a new start. When a person accepts Christ as their Lord and Savior, the book of Romans gives us the, what we call the Roman road. It's an outline for salvation. And one of the words in there, one of the phrases that God uses, he said, ask, you know, and see if I'll not save you. Let me tell you what that said. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. That's a promise from God. <clears throat> now, don't have that and think that that's a ticket for you to live your life any way you want to after you get saved. The Bible calls us newborn babes in Christ, desiring the sincere milk of the Word that we may grow thereby. You see, every one of us here, me included, are just a work in progress. We've not reached perfection. We not re we've not reached that place where we are above anybody else. Every one of us see us every day of our life in some fashion or the other. Now we don't intend to. I don't think anybody sets down deliberately to do something against God. That old human nature that we have inside of us. You know, see, God saved your soul. But he can't do anything about your spirit. You were born a sinner. God's blood washed those sins from you. But we still live in this old sinful life. And so today, that they lay us down here, or to those skies bust open, and the trumpet of God sound, and the dead in Christ rise first, we are still going to stumble and fall. Amen. But thank God we have a Redeemer that loves us, that cares for us, that was willing to die on that cross for our sins, and we can come back to Him any time.
a mess with God. Amen. Amen. When he tells you not to do something, you better not do it. Or you will pay the consequences. We give an invitation, and I've had people, literally, you can see them from up here. Y'all can't see them where you are, but they would grip those pews so tight that you could see the redness across their hands. So the Holy Spirit was drawing them so hard to step out, come down that aisle, and either give their heart to God or rededicate their life or whatever that God was laying on their heart to do. And they will squeeze it so tight. And you squeeze your hand like that so tight, eventually it just starts turning red. And they just stand there and they resist the Holy Spirit. Say a prayer. They walk out that door. Folks, it's a dangerous thing. When the Holy Spirit begins to touch you for you to say no. Because you see, God has said this in his word. This is not enough said to preach. My spirit will not strive with you always. There will be a day when God will give up on you. There will be a day when God said, I've done everything I can do. The rest is up to them. You know, one of the hardest <coughs> people to ever reach in a church. And I said, I've been doing this for a few days now. <laughs> I started when I was 27 pastor my first church, so I just I don't I just passed that 70 mark. So I, I've got a few days behind me. But I've learned something in those years. I learned something in that minute. That when God is dealing with a person's heart, that's the time you need to do what God asks. When God opens the door in your life, you need to walk through that door. Amen. I know we don't like to spend time in the hallway when God shuts one door. But sometimes that hallway is exactly what we need. That hallway is where we get close to God and start remembering where we were. When God found us. When God said, when you're ready, and notice when He said, when you're ready, then I will open the door. Amen. God's not going to open until so you're ready. He will squeeze and walk out that door. I want to ask you a question this morning. Our musicians are going to come and we'll get ready for an invitation this morning. First off, if you were to die right now, do you know you spend eternity in heaven? Do you know what? If I was to ask you to raise your hand this morning and say, Preacher, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, if I was to die, I'd go to be with God in heaven. Could you raise your hand this morning? Or would you have to hang your head in shame and say, I've never been to that place. Can I encourage you this morning? Can I beg with you this morning? Won't you let this be that day? This could be the greatest day of the rest of your life. Maybe you're here and you are a Christian. You've been saved. Somewhere along the line, you've drifted away from that fellowship with God. <coughs> Wouldn't it be good to come home this morning? Wouldn't it be good for you to leave this building today washed and refreshed and renewed with the Spirit of God in your heart? God will do that to you this morning if you just leave. I said one of the hardest people I've ever tried to reach trying to build a church was this girl People that have been hurt in some other church. Because, you see, 
They want to judge us by those other churches. They want to say, if I got hurt in that church, I'm going to get hurt in the next. And they're hard to read because they've got that wall built up of resentment, bitterness. And until God tears that wall down, you're never going to be happy no matter where you go. Come on, this woman. Thank God for standing there with those nail scarred hands. Yield to what the Holy Spirit. Somebody, if you're touching somebody's heart this morning, I, I believe that. With all my heart. There's somebody in our service this morning that God is really dealing with you. Would you yield to him today? Would you let him do what he need, you need to do in your heart? I'm going to pray that you will. My prayer is not going to do it. You're going to have to act on what the Holy Spirit is telling you you need to do. Father, we thank you for this service today. God, I thank you for each and every one of these and took time out to come to be a part of this service. Now, Lord, we turn this invitation over to you. And God, we ask you to bless it. And Lord, have your will in your way in every heart that's here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's be amen.
read reading, but I can't read writing. <laughs> All right. You pronounce that Canna? Canna? Canna. Tanya. Tanya. Come on, buddy. This is Tanya. She comes this morning and she says, I know that I'm saved, but I just want to rededicate my life. Amen. All you Christ and Canna. Congratulate her on her decision this morning to walk a new life with Christ. Amen. And Lord, Amen. be grateful that you just walked a new life with Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. God can do this. And then you got trouble coming. <laughs> <laughs> this is her better hat. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Ed and everybody like it. It's good to have them. They've been a part of our church for a while. <coughs> We're so glad that came this morning. All right, let's bow our heads and give thanks and word of prayer. Again, if you're visiting with us today, we hope and pray that you enjoy the service. But we more than that, we hope and pray that you'll stay and have lunch with us today. All right? I said it is good to have Brother Jerry and him back with us. Brother Jerry, would you do us the honor this morning of dismissing us in prayer and asking God's blessing on our meal for us? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and for all of the privileges that you've given us. Thank you for the service that we've heard. Pray that you go with us now as we go to our homes. Bless this food that we're going to take to our bodies, our bodies to thy service. For us to be in Amen. Amen. Amen.